Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, have you ever considered that God could be having a very special type of or special brand or special sense of humor? Consider this. Jesus calls the cream of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to be with him at Gethsemane. And there Jesus tells them, can you not wait and pray an hour with me? Well, what do they do? They fail the test. They sleep right through. And Jesus gives them three chances and they fail right through all the three trials. Now, what would you and I do when someone fails a test? We lower the bar. Well, the next time Jesus encounters them, now the Lord is risen, he calls all the disciples. And now he tells them not to wait in prayer for half an hour or 45 minutes or 15 minutes. He tells them, wait and pray until you receive the power from above the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus does not give them a time frame. Now they need to wait and pray endlessly. And for 40 days, they are waiting and praying. No sign of Pentecost, but they are waiting and praying. And right enough, on the 40th day, they receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? The fruit of the Spirit is patience and endurance, among other things. And we see as we read the scripture, and as we see the history of the church, that waiting becomes a way of prayer. Waiting becomes a way of loving God. Waiting becomes an expression of faith. And waiting becomes an essential component in mission, in spreading the kingdom of heaven. Friends, let us consider this. Very often we despaired when we had to wait. We felt desperate, especially when we saw some others not having to wait. Some others seem to get what they want, when they wanted it, the way they wanted it. But perhaps you have been waiting too long for some small breakthroughs. And here is where we must know, a call to wait is a call by God to a higher grace. A call that God gives only those who are special, who are dear to him, for whom he has a greater mission. When Jesus asked the three disciples to wait an hour, it was for a grace. And what was that grace? Jesus says, wait and pray that when trials come, you will not fall. And Jesus was referring to the coming of the persecution, his own death, his crucifixion, and those three days of darkness until the resurrection. He told them that if you wait and pray, you will be able to go through the season of trials and emerge standing. But later you see Jesus asking them to wait and pray endlessly. Why? Because the mission was greater. Now their mission to wait for the Holy Spirit was not merely to go through a little trial of four or five days, but it was for them to fulfill the mission of the Heavenly Father by spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. In every waiting, we can be so sure God has a heavenly mission to be accomplished in our lives. No wonder Jesus said, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate because he explains narrow and difficult is the path that leads to life Broad and easy is the road that leads to destruction. And I am so sure that you and I living in this age, we understand this word much better than any previous generation could have. Why? Most of us live in the city. And when you are traveling by city roads, you're practically flying through. It is speed that is your privilege. And when you face a roadblock, what do you do? You stick your head out, you yell, you abuse, and you have your right of way. But when you go to a little village, 
Have you ever gone into those interior towns? Maybe a little village at a mountainside. The roads are narrow, very, very uneven. And when you are going in your very sophisticated car, you will often find someone on their feet is reaching faster than you. Well, here is where, friends, we must know, Jesus tells us the rules of the kingdom of God is very different from the rules of this world. In this world, speed is a marker for efficiency and importance. If you are efficient, you get things done quickly. If you are important, you don't have to wait. But in the kingdom of God, it is necessary to wait. In waiting, I am being brewed in humility. I am being prepared in godliness. Those who wait can enter life. Those who wait can relish the graces of heaven. And not only that, when we learn to wait on God, we learn to wait on one another. And as we learn to wait on one another, we are already spreading the aroma of Christ. In contrast, a person who is arrogant with God who insists that he gets things done by God as and when he wants, is definitely not a godly person, no sign of humility, and such a person will also be arrogant and impatient with those around him. These are the people who issue ultimatums. These are the people who make life hell for those around them. So friends, today, if you have been called to wait, if there is a suffering if there is a situation where you are waiting and praying, know that God has a higher mission for you. Know that in this waiting, God is making you the aroma of Christ for those around you. And yes, this is how the kingdom of heaven comes upon this earth. Dear friends, years ago, when I was studying in Rome, I was staying in a hostel, hostel for priests. The hostel was situated on top of a hill called Gianicolo. This was near St. Peter's Basilica. At the foot of the hill on the other side, was situated the central jail of Italy. And there was a road passing by. My room was by the side of this road, and down there was the jail. Something I noted from the beginning, at night, after midnight, I would hear youngsters calling out, in a loud voice. I did not know what they were shouting for. Later, I realized they were calling out names. Giacomo, Italian name. Leonardo, Priscilla. And they cried out on top of their voice, even bruising their throat. And it, it went on till early morning, this, this shouting, this crying. I was wondering why. One day, I was walking towards the university early morning, and a youngster came from behind. He told me his name was Pavolo. He called me Padre. Padre means in Italian, father. Padre. The whole night, I was sitting there by the side of the road, crying out, shouting the name of my girlfriend. The name of her girlfriend was Priscilla. And I asked him, why were you shouting so loud your girlfriend's name? He said, Father, uh, Padre, she is in the jail. She was imprisoned because she was found to have drugs. 
together with her friends drugs in the bag she did not betray me padre she loves me very much and we don't know when the trial is going to be for a month prashila is in the jail and i come every day padre i know i made a big mistake i used to take drugs with her and paolo came from a little town in south italy in search of job and he found a job in the city of rome in a fast food restaurant and she was working there that's where they met they fell in love with each other a padre we used to take drugs in the evening when we met but she never betrayed me now i i i realize what a big mistake i was doing after the job in the restaurant late in the evening i would come to st peter's basilica i made my confession padre i attend the mass and i come and sit here with something to munch and i would cry out cry out on top of my voice prashila i asked him paolo are you sure prashila will be able to hear your voice don't know padre most probably she would not be able to hear my voice because the cell of the jail is there far away i don't know which cell she is in i just shout out with a faint hope if only prashila would be able to hear my voice she loves padre my voice whenever we met she would ask me to sing and i would sing for her she loves my voice i want her to know that i love her if she hears my voice she would be very happy padre i told him paolo her heart will be waiting to hear your voice and since she's waiting to hear your voice she will and i told him paolo god god is already heard your cry and god will answer your prayer and he said padre that's my prayer as soon as she comes out of the jail we want to get married and i want to take her to my little town their life is much less fast and we are very much peace we want to live together loving each other and um, he asked me padre are you sure god is hearing my voice i told him oh sure certo oh, sure i said he came forward and and he gave me a very warm handshake and said grazie padre thank you father and he went away five months after he and his girlfriend came to meet me in the hostel and they gave me the good news she was acquitted because it was first time crime and she was given a warning and they had met the parish priest of his parish and the marriage is already settled my dear friends we cry out to god when we cry out to god in the moments of our struggles our troubles with all the fear and pain in our hearts is in there a doubt is 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 anybody out there to hear my voice does god care does god really hear my voice will he answer me having do that doubt often perhaps a faint hope as paulo told me a faint hope that my cry would be heard my voice will reach the ear of my god in fact the bible tells us often 
this anguish of every man every woman will god hear my voice my cry habakkuk the prophet says chapter 1 verse 2 how long o lord must i call must i cry for help and he will not hear anguish he will not hear how long will i cry for help this is a anguish a doubt the pain of our heart but then we must as we read the bible we find this assurance from god isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 before you call i will answer while you are yet speaking i will hear before you call i will answer while you are yet speaking i will hear malachi chapter 3 tells us the servants of god spoke and the lord bent over and listened in psalm 34 there is a very reassuring promise given to us psalm 34 verse 6 this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles this poor man who is the poor man does not necessarily mean materially poor the anavim yahweh the poor of the lord the poor of the lord are those who put their trust in god trust only in god this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles and the previous verse verse 4 i sought the lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears i sought the lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears this assurance is given to us by god's word and jesus assured us in such certain terms ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and the door will be open to you jesus himself prayed the whole night and when he came down from the lonely place from the mountain where he was praying the disciples saw a glow on his face such a delight for having seen the face of his father and the lord is telling us when you pray pray abba that beautiful word a relationship that god wants to keep with us a relationship of confidence intimate love he cares whenever we pray this confidence shall be there in our hearts the lord is waiting to listen to my cry my call my prayer and the lord will answer me rising of the sun to the going down of the same the lord's name is to be praised praise ye the lord praise him all the servants of the lord praise the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord from this time forth now and forevermore from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the lord's name is to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the lord's name is to be praised praise ye the lord praise him all the servants of the lord praise the name of the lord bless
Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth, now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand, the Lord's name is to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the Lord's name is to be praised praise ye the Lord praise him all the servants of the Lord praise the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord from this time now and forevermore Praise be the Lord Praise Him all the servants of the Lord Praise the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord From this time forth Now and forevermore The name of the Lord is to be praised. The name of the Lord is to be glorified. The name of the Lord is to be honored. For the name of the Lord is holy. And this name is given to each one of us to love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our might, and with everything within us. The psalmist repeatedly says, we must praise God in everything, in every word that we speak, every deed. And it says in Psalm 130 verse 6, my soul Wait for the Lord that day that watch for the morning. Every morning when we wake up, our mouths must utter the praise of God. For God, you are the God that needs to be glorified. Every morning, Lord, when we wake up, your name must be on our lips because you have given us this calling to come into your presence. Psalm 5 verse 3 says, My voice shall you hear in the morning. My voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord. And in the morning, I will direct my prayer unto you and look up. My prayer shall be directed to you and you alone, God, to give you the praise, honor, glory from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, yes, Lord. the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Praise ye the Lord, praise him all the servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth, now and forevermore. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him all the servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this town for and now and forevermore. 
I just want to praise you, God. I just want to praise you. Hallelujah. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because of His great compassion and lamentation. The Lord gives us a reminder of His great mercies that overflows. His great compassion it is always ever ready when we come into His presence. Chapter 3, verse 22. And verse 23 tells us, They are new every morning. Every morning. Because He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God that is faithful to us. He gives us New insights every morning when we come into His presence. Lamentation gives us the hope that Christ wants to speak to us in the morning. And in Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 8, In the morning came the word of the Lord to me. A promise that we can hope in the morning, Jesus. For you to speak your word just like Ezekiel heard your word. And he said, in the morning, your word came to me. Your word came to me in the morning because he came to live with you. Every morning, noon, and evening. I want to worship you, God, from my heart. Because it must be the desire of my heart, not lip service, Lord, not an ordinary way, but a committed way to love you. To seek you is to seek your face, O oh Lord. To listen is to listen to your voice, a message you would speak. To dwell in your presence, God, because that is your calling. You set a time for me to be with you so that we can have a relationship, Lord. Oh, Abba, how I long for you to hold me close. For you are a God who made me. You have repaired this heart of mine, God. You have put a new spirit within me. You have cast all my wickedness behind your back that I may be an instrument to proclaim your word that every child watching you, God, adoring you will give you the glory. And to respond, I must be available at all times, God to listen to your ways. Great is your faithfulness, God. You are faithful to me always. Morning after morning, I want to proclaim to all my brothers and sisters and they in turn will proclaim to others. Let the whole world know that great is your faithfulness, Lord. Great is your mercy. Great is your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes, Jesus. Morning. 